The name of Mestre Bimba, the creator of Capoeira Regional, should be familiar even to capoeiristas who have recently begun to learn the art. But who was this man? And what was it about him that led him to plant the seed that has grown into the art form that we know today as Capoeira Regional? To answer these questions, it might help to go back to the roots, back to Brazil, back to the spiritual home of Afro-Brazilian culture, back to Bahia. Mestre Bimba was born Manuel dos Reis Machado on November 23, 1900 in the neighborhood of Engenho Velho in Salvador da Bahia, Brazil. Legend has it that his mother, Maria Martinha do Bonfim, had a bet with the midwife that she would have a daughter. But when he came out, the midwife said, see, it's a boy, look at his bimba, and the nickname stuck. His father, Luiz Candido Machado, was a famous batuki fighter. This traditional African martial art was still popular in Brazil at the time and involved contestants trying to knock each other down with powerful blows to the legs. Batuki matches were often brutal and violent and were eventually banned by the police. These matches were accompanied by traditional percussion, birimbau, pandeiro and ganza or heko heko. Later, Mestre Bimba would find inspiration in this style of fight for some elements of his own creation, Capoeira Regional. Mestre Bimba began training Capoeira when he was 12 years old with Benchinho, a captain of a dock workers team in the Bahia Shipping Company, who taught Capoeira even though in those days the practice was still being persecuted by the authorities. Capoeira, the dance fight game of the slaves, was considered a fight of criminals and street gangs. Someone caught playing capoeira could be dragged behind a horse through the streets to the police station. For this reason, it was sometimes joked that it was better to play close to the station. Mestre Bimba himself once paid a bribe of a hundred reais just to play for two hours undisturbed. Life must have been hard in Bahia back then. Even though slavery had been abolished by a decree from Princess Isabel in 1888, the freed slaves and their descendants struggled to find work in the toughest jobs. Mestre Bimba worked as a stevedore for 14 years, carrying loads of up to 265 pounds, as well as working as a charcoal burner and a coach driver, in addition to learning capoeira. Somehow, he still managed to find time to develop his capoeira, and in 1918, he began teaching at Clube Union in Ingenio de Brotas in Salvador. His was the first school to bring capoeira from the streets and into an academy. In 1928, feeling that capoeira was losing its essence and effectiveness, becoming stylized into a folkloric dance just for tourists to see, Mestre Bimba's ideas crystallized into a new style which preserved the traditions of the freedom fight of the African slaves and Capoeira's Angola roots, while incorporating new moves from Batuki and moves of his own invention. His efforts were so successful that after a performance at the Palace of Bahia's governor, the official ban on Capoeira was finally lifted. This ban had been in place for hundreds of years, since the slave masters first feared that the slaves would use Capoeira to fight their masters and escape to freedom. Mestre Bimba then went on to found the first official capoeira school in 1932. 
de Academia Escola de Cultura Regional. Because of her history, capoeira at that time was still discriminated against by upper-class Brazilian society. Mestre Bimba's vision of organized schools with clean white uniforms, a curriculum, graduations and codes of conduct began to change the reputation associated with capoeira. He set new standards for the art. With the growing reputation of his school, even the sons of middle and upper class society became interested in the practice, and soon capoeiristas grew to represent people from all walks of life in Brazil. Many mestres who have world class schools today began their journey on the capoeira path with Mestre Bimba in those days, like Mestre Itapuan, Mestre Acordeon, Mestres Camisa, Jarel, Decanio, and Nenel. In 1937, Mestre Bimba was invited to demonstrate capoeira to the then president of Brazil, Getulio Vargas, who shook his hand, saying, Capoeira is Brazil's true national sport. Later, he earned official recognition for his capoeira teaching methods when he received the State Board of Education certificate for his academy. With his students, Mestre Bimba traveled widely in Brazil, demonstrating his art and gaining recognition for the traditions it represented. Sadly, for some reason, Bahia itself, the capital of Afro-Brazilian culture, the birthplace of capoeira, and the birthplace of Mestre Bimba himself, didn't give him the recognition he deserved. Finally, he left for Goiânia in 1973, invited by a former student but he died there on February 5th, 1974. So those are some facts about Mr. Bimba's life some of the important names and dates. But what was it about this man that led him to create such a legacy as Capoeira Regional? I think that the qualities that enabled him to achieve what he did are reflected today in Capoeira Regional herself and in the maestries and teachers who continue to pass on that legacy to us. Forza, strength, a student named Helampago relates how he was a hard hitter and fast, but from his full height he could make himself as tall as a child on the floor. To some, he was known as Tres Pancadas, because this was the maximum number of hits anyone could sustain from him. Maybe it was his strength of character though, and not just physical strength, that attracted students from all over Brazil to come and learn from him at the foot of the Birimbao, and be inspired to continue his work long after he was gone. Coragem, courage. In 1936, Mestre Bimba challenged any martial artist to prove themselves against his new style of fight. Four challenges came, including professional jiu-jitsu fighters. He beat them all. Even more courageous was his lifelong persistence in developing capoeira as a martial art and showing it to the world even when society at the time refused to see its value. Sabedoria, wisdom. One of Mestre Bimba's qualities, that even his most educated students, the doctors and lawyers, all refer to, is his endless supply of wisdom and of malicia and malandragem. According to Mestre Itapuan, he not only taught them capoeira, he taught them how to live, and live well. To Mestre Bimba, strength was one thing, but the intelligence to know how and when to use it was even more important. Visão, vision. From the beginning, Mestre Bimba was able to see beyond the stylized dance that street capoeira had become in Salvador, a show for tourists. 
but an English there, to the potential that Capoeira had to become a true martial art for mind and body. It's this same vision that we can see reflected in the maestries and teachers who travel from Brazil sharing their passion and their art form and striving to continue that development. <laughs> Organization. Organization. To realize his vision, Mestre Bimba was the first master to develop a structured system of capoeira learning with examinations and graduations. He introduced a system of silk scarves denoting the level of qualification in capoeira his students had attained. He was the first to hold batizados or baptisms the most important ceremony for the beginning capoeista, when they first played to the music of Birimbao. Maestri Bimba also developed sequences of movements for training to prepare students for the reality of attack and defense, esquiva and reply. Respect. Respect. Maestri Bimba must have commanded respect. His students tell how when he walked into a room, everyone was quiet waiting for his instructions. But he also demanded respect between all his students. One of his academy rules insisted that the strong respect the weak and help them in training. Tradição, tradition. Mestre Bimba set out to create a martial art that would preserve the best of capoeira, the Afro-Brazilian tradition of a dance of freedom and a fight for justice, invented by the slaves. But as well as developing capoeira, Mestre Bimba incorporated other cultural traditions into his curriculum. Mestre Bimba's capoeira shows often included samba de roda, a traditional dance involving Bahian costumes and rhythms, or makulele, a stylized dance fight with sticks. These aspects of Afro-Brazilian culture which otherwise might have been lost, are being kept alive in capoeira schools around the world. Innovação. Innovation. While Mestre Bimba worked to preserve Afro-Brazilian culture within capoeira, at the same time, he set out to improve on the foundations built by the slaves. He developed new moves to counteract old attacks, and developed new rhythms for the Birimbao to dictate how the game should be played in the harder. Rhythms like São Bento Grande da Regional, Ayuna, and Amazonas. To this day, the process of innovation is continued, with today's masters constantly evolving the style to adapt to new ideas. Beyond the facts that we know about his life, and beyond the qualities he had, which are reflected in Capoeira Regional today, there is one thing that I think can bring us even closer to an answer to our question, who was Mestre Bimba? And that's his own voice. Mestre Bimba's voice is powerful, simple, but humble, like the Bidimbao. But when you hear it, you can't help but listen. Sabe?
Capifura Capifura Quem é que me mata? Viva meu mestre, e é que me ensino, ai ai a malanda, e é matadumo.